Hi, I'm Alex. Before I dive into what went down on what was supposed to be a special birthday trip, make sure to like and subscribe for more stories like this one. All right, let's get into it. Living with Samantha for nearly two years has been a mix of love and hectic schedules. Both of us have demanding jobs, so finding time just for us has been tough. With her 26th birthday around the corner, I saw a perfect chance to shake things up. I planned a special mountain trip. Samantha loves skiing, and even though heights aren't my thing, I prefer hiking. I figured we could both have a bit of what we loved. I spent weeks organizing everything in secret, booked a cozy lodge right by the best ski slopes and trails, sorted the best gear for us both, and even checked the weather to make sure it was perfect. I was pumped to give her this gift, hoping it would be a memorable escape for us. When I finally told Samantha about the trip, her smile lit up the room. Babe, that sounds amazing. I can't wait. But then, a curveball, just a week before we were set to leave, she dropped a bomb. So I invited Melissa and her boyfriend to join us. Hope that's cool. I masked my disappointment with a nod. Yeah, sure, the more the merrier, right? Inside, I felt the intimate vibe of our romantic getaway slipping away. What was planned as a couple's retreat was quickly morphing into a group excursion. The change in plan stung a bit, not gonna lie. I wanted this trip to be about reconnecting, about us. But hey, it was her birthday, so I rolled with it, clinging to the hope that we could still steal some moments just for the two of us. The first morning of the trip, I watched Samantha zip up her ski jacket, excitement radiating off her as she chatted about the slopes. These runs are supposed to be epic, she gushed to Melissa and her boyfriend Dan. I smiled, trying to catch the vibe. Have fun, I'll catch up with you guys later, I said, planning to hit some hiking trails myself. As they disappeared in a flurry of ski gear, the quiet of the lodge settled around me. I headed out alone, the trails peaceful, but my thoughts loud and busy. I'd hoped for mornings waking up slow, sharing coffee, and hitting the slopes together, even if I'd be more at ease on the gentler trails. By the second day, it was clear the trip I'd imagined was just that, an imagination. Samantha and her friends spent every waking moment skiing. Evenings, which I thought would be our time, were spent with everyone recounting their adventures, Samantha laughing and animated in a way that I hadn't seen in a long time. Isn't this great, Alex? Samantha asked during dinner, her cheeks flushed from the cold and excitement. Yeah, great, I replied, my smile not quite reaching my eyes. The disconnect was palpable. I felt like a tag-along on my own vacation, sidelined in a celebration I had orchestrated. The tension thickened with each passing moment. It felt like Samantha and I were in two different worlds, hers vibrant and thrilling, mine increasingly isolated and overlooked. I tried to express how I felt, hoping for some acknowledgement. Hey, I thought we could do the couple's spa tomorrow, just us, I ventured during a quiet moment. Actually, Melissa and I wanted to check out the new ice bar in town. You don't mind, right? Samantha's casual dismissal felt like a cold splash. Sure, sounds fun, I managed to say, though inside my frustration simmered. It was becoming painfully clear that what I'd envisioned as a romantic getaway was nothing more than a fun trip for her and her friends, with me just along for the ride. Day three rolled around, and with it came the hike I had earmarked as our time on the schedule. The morning air was crisp, promising clear skies, a perfect day for hiking. My spirits lifted slightly, clinging to hope that today, finally, Samantha and I could reconnect. Ready for our hike, I asked, trying to sound upbeat as we laced up our boots. Absolutely. It's going to be a blast, Samantha beamed. But her enthusiasm wasn't just for the activity. It was because Melissa was coming along, too. As we hit the trail, my heart sank. So much for our time. As we walked, Samantha and Melissa led the way, their conversation a constant stream about everything but us. Work, mutual friends, plans for future trips. I trailed behind, my presence seemingly forgotten. The disconnect was more than geographical. It felt emotional, a gap widening with every step they took ahead. Trying to bridge this gap, I quickened my pace to catch up. Hey, can we talk about how things are going on this trip? I ventured, hoping to steer the conversation to us, to how we felt. 
Oh, come on, Alex, it's a beautiful day. Let's not ruin it with a heavy talk, Samantha replied without missing a beat, her tone light, dismissive. It's just that I feel like we haven't really spent any time together, I pressed, my voice edged with frustration. Samantha sighed, a hint of irritation flickering across her face. It's my birthday trip, Alex. I just want to have fun, not get into some deep discussion about us. The rest of the hike passed in a blur of strained silence and forced small talk. I felt sidelined, a stranger in what was supposed to be my relationship. The gap between my hopes for this trip and the reality of it stretched wider, filled with Samantha's indifference to my feelings. As we returned to the lodge, the weight of unspoken words hung heavy. It was clear that Samantha and I were on different pages, perhaps even different books. I was an outsider on my own trip, my efforts unnoticed, my presence unappreciated. The seeds of doubt planted by each dismissive gesture and each indifferent word began to sprout a painful realization. Maybe this wasn't just about the trip. Maybe it was about us. The last day of the trip was supposed to be different. Samantha had promised we'd spend it together. Just us, climbing at the nearby crag. Yet, as the sun crested the horizon, it was clear that promise was as hollow as the echoes in the mountains. Samantha announced at breakfast that everyone was excited to join us for climbing. My heart sank, the last vestiges of hope dissipating with her words. Back home, the unease and resentment that had built up over the trip simmered in me. I couldn't shake the feeling of being an afterthought in my own relationship. As we unpacked, the silence between us felt charged, heavy with all the things I hadn't said. Finally, I couldn't hold it in any longer. Samantha, we need to talk about this trip, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. She looked up, surprised. What about it? I had a great time. That's just it, I replied, the frustration evident in my tone. You had a great time, but it felt like you completely forgot about me. I felt alone on a trip I planned for us to be together. Samantha's face hardened. It was my birthday, Alex. I wanted to enjoy it. You're making a big deal out of nothing. It's not nothing to me, I countered, my voice rising. I planned this trip to share special moments together, not to watch you have them with everyone else. Her response was a mix of irritation and defensiveness. I don't see why I should apologize for enjoying my birthday. You're being too sensitive. That's when I reached into my bag and pulled out a small velvet box. I opened it to reveal the engagement ring I had carried with me on the trip, the ring I had planned to give her on a perfect romantic moment that never came. See this? I brought this because I wanted to ask you to marry me. But this trip showed me we're not on the same page, not even close, I said, the pain evident in my voice. Samantha's eyes widened, her posture softening slightly. Alex, I... No, I interrupted, closing the box with a snap. I needed to see that we valued our time together equally, but it's clear we don't. I can't spend my life feeling like an afterthought. The conversation that followed was long and painful. As much as Samantha tried to explain and justify, the truth was clear. My decision was made. The realization that our paths had diverged, perhaps long before this trip, settled in with a quiet finality. After the confrontation, the atmosphere in our home became unbearable. Every room echoed memories of both good times and the recent painful revelations. Samantha tried to salvage what was left of our relationship, her apologies laced with desperation. But something fundamental had shifted within me during that trip. I realized that mere apologies couldn't mend what was fundamentally broken. I think it's best if we go our separate ways, I told Samantha firmly. My resolve strengthened by the clarity that the recent events had provided. The look in her eyes was one of realization, perhaps understanding for the first time the depth of the disconnect between us. The process of her moving out was a tangible symbol of our lives unraveling. Boxes stacked, filled with belongings that mingled over four years, now being separated back into individual lives. As each box left the house, so did the remnants of our relationship. In the quiet that followed her departure, I spent a lot of time reflecting on self-worth and the necessity of being with someone who genuinely values and respects their partner. It was a lesson learned the hard way, through the lens of lost love and missed connections. I pondered over my own needs and desires, 
realizing how vital it is to feel valued in any relationship. You, I began to reclaim my space, converting what was once our room into a new area for hobbies I had set aside, like painting and writing, activities that allowed me to express and heal. I reconnected with old friends, took up hiking more seriously, and found peace in the solitude that nature offered. It wasn't just about moving on, it was about moving forward to a better understanding of myself and what I needed in life and love. Looking to the future, I felt a cautious optimism. Whether or not love was on the horizon didn't matter as much as finding joy in the present and learning to appreciate my own company. I realized that being alone on a mountain trail was infinitely better than feeling alone next to someone. In rebuilding my life, I was not just patching up old wounds, but laying a new foundation, one built on self-respect, clear boundaries, and the unyielding belief that everyone deserves a partner who not only loves, but truly values them. As I moved forward, each step was a testament to the growth that often comes from the hardest decisions, signaling not an end, but a new beginning. That wraps up our story. Now, I have a question for you all. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to choose between staying in a comfortable relationship and stepping out on your own to uphold your self-respect? What did you choose, and do you think it was the right decision? I'm eager to hear your stories and perspectives, so please share them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any future content. Your engagement helps us grow and keeps these stories coming. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to reading your comments. Our support helps us bring more stories like this to life.